Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to do an update to yesterday's video talking about a comic book creator saying they're not getting paid. And uh, boy, oh boy, this is really interesting. It's been going around that Heidi McDonald at The Beat is finally admitting that comics is not fine. Well, she turned on that pretty fast. Uh, maybe she's all right. There you go. There you go. Because y'all, you know, if you said this stuff you know, a couple years ago, you're a terrible person. You're all right. You're comic skate. Well, if that's the case, maybe we should talk to some of our friends at some comic conventions and make sure that certain people aren't allowed there. There you go. Uh, no, this is very interesting because now we're starting to see that all these YouTubers were right. And mm -hmm. we've, we've including had, us. Including <laughs> us. We've had multiple instances of validation over the last couple of years. There have actually been comic book pros that were uh, you know, very much against uh, YouTubers calling out the problems in the comic book industry, and we can discuss the politics or whatever. You take the politics out of it completely. The comic book industry is in a very bad state. It's right been! Now. It's been in a bad state. Even before COVID! And we're going to talk about just how bad it, it actually is, because now it's undeniable that uh, a lot of comic book creators are screwed because well not when it affects them when it affects them so what's going to happen is everybody's going to act everybody's going to act like this is uh brand new earth shattering news because they said it because so they it said it and they're going to ignore the five or six years that uh you know the comic book press dogpiled on youtubers and there's all this back and forth and the twitter arguments and all that stuff we're accepting apologies you can email them to us at what is it shout out at clownfish tv yeah, yeah. or you can send it to us on twitter we'll gladly take yeah. it either way um, and here's the thing, like here at Clownfish TV, uh, you know, we actually do try to present facts without in interjecting politics into a situation. And uh, I'm very much a numbers guy. And we've been watching this situation for years unfold. And we're like, hey, even if you don't like the politics of the people that are calling this stuff out, it is undeniable that comics is in trouble. Mm -hmm. it's and, been. and now we're seeing what actually happened. Very interesting. We're going to we're going to talk about this uh, a little more in detail before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views. And Rance guys, um, over 282, almost 283,000 subs. Hey, and if you don't like what we're saying about this now, and let me tell you, you can direct your commentary to the beat because that's where it's coming from. It's coming from the beat. And before that, it was coming from Bleeding Cool. Before that, it was coming from us. But you know. <laughs> so yeah, so let's, let's walk this back a little bit. If you didn't watch the first video, watch the first video. There are multiple reports of late payments to comic book creators from multiple publishers. Mm -hmm. Now, on the back end of it, I actually uh, am hearing that one of those publishers might include, might, I can't, I can't, you can't confirm because we don't know personally, just hearing. Might include Marvel. And if it includes Marvel, if Marvel's not paying people, that is a huge red flag. Mm -hmm. I honestly thought it would be DC before Marvel. Yeah, yeah, I could see Zaslav just being like, yeah, comics aren't important. You don't need yeah, to pay those see, people. Yeah, I honestly thought uh, it, when they said main one, I was thinking it was DC. Uh, lots of people talking about it. And finally, you know, the rumbling, uh, you know, hit the press. And here's the thing. This is this is an open secret in comics. I mean, just like everybody's going on about like, oh, my God, there's predators working in comics. There's also a pattern of late payment and people working for uh, very low page rates and uh, basically creators being asked to float loans to publishers mm -hmm. like, hey, um, you know, I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Yeah, I mean, what you other know? job would you agree to do? Yeah, you'll that, get paid I'm three work, months, yeah. six months, whenever we feel like it. Mm -hmm. So here it turns out that, uh, again, YouTubers were right. I think your, your boy Zach actually said uh, last year that he thought a lot of the comic book publishers were being floated by PPP loans mm -hmm. during the pandemic, and that actually turned out to be the case. Yep. And now that the PP so shout money... shout out to him for getting that right. Yep, now that the PP money is gone... Now the, you always call it the PP money. The PPP money is the gone. The PP payments. The PP uh, payments. Then you got the PPP. Yeah. The other PP payments are gone. Because it did not make sense to me. We had all these all these articles, you know, talking about how comic sales have never been better. They don't take the money to buy comics and then to make it look their numbers are better and then sending them to Ollie's. I, I don't know because, you know, they're like more people, you know, publishers are selling more comics. I'm like comic shops I knew during the pandemic. They were going out of business. Multiple comic book retailers that I have talked to. In fact, I talked to a guy the other day who owns a, a card shop that used to sell comics. And he said he won't carry comics because he can't move them. The new comics, he mm -hmm. cannot move them 
So he doesn't buy new comics. He's like all the other guys I talk to that deals with uh, they deal with Diamond and they. We've carry heard this comics. before, though. Yeah, they're like they can't sell them. The one place that uh, we used to buy a lot of comics from went online only during the pandemic, and actually before the pandemic, they stopped carrying new issues. They sent an email blast out to everybody. I'm not going to name check the the retailer. But they're like, there's no money in new comics, so we're not selling them anymore. Right. You know, and but I'm like, how are the sales up? And of course, you know, they're rolling in manga, they're rolling in crowdfunding. Anything they can roll in to make it look like the numbers are better than they are. Yeah. So let's let's look at this. Uh, as actually by Beat Staff, so maybe it's not Heidi in particular, but other people. But she's in charge. So yeah. Well, it's funny when you write an article on PMP and and you don't you don't want to put your name on it or you don't have time to, to log into your account, it automatically comes up as newsroom. Newsroom. Yeah. So sometimes it's just by it's hiding me. behind the beat staff. It's like, well, I don't know who that was. Well, don't, don't don't blame me. Don't cancel me. Don't call me alt right or Comicsgate. Um, yeah. So th- there's a podcast with uh, sketches sketched uh, David Harper, who actually he is a guy who tracks. Comic book revenue, he tracks how much creators are making. You know, it's been around for a while. Um, this is the Bruno Batista of Dublin's Big Bang Comics talked at length about the product glut on the market. This is what he said. This I is, love this. This makes me... This is a comic book retailer. I can't. Okay. The market cannot take the outpouring of new titles that seem to have no clearly defined audience. We just, that no one wants... You mean like the books that no one buys because they're not somebody anybody wanted and they keep changing characters and doing stupid gimmickly shit that no one wants? You mean those books that people like us have gotten so much shit over calling out? You mean them? Those, yes. Those. Uh, yes, the, the books that, that uh, maybe cater to. And look, there's, there's a place for all kinds of stories, right? But uh, a lot of the comic book industry has been following Tumblr and they've been turning mainstream superhero comics into Tumblr fanfics. To be fair, though, here's one of the big problems they're doing. There's an audience for those things, but usually they're found in places like Webtoons. Yeah. And superhero comics aren't usually what they're reading when they want, like, certain ships, relationships, you know, that kind of stuff. It's not superhero comics that they're going for. So Heidi McDonald was also on this podcast. Uh, over the weekend, names were finally named, specifically Aftershock and Valiant. Yeah, we named Valiant the last one because um, it was already posted on Twitter. Yeah, well, they Valiant, they started, like, they cut back to, like, one comic a month or something. Like, really? I thought things were great, guys. I thought things were great. Uh, they said about publishers owing late payments to creators, although there were several others that creators are talking about privately, and perhaps who not so privately. It probably depends on the NDA or whatever. Uh, you can read the details below, but in a report on the matter, graphic policy is Brett uh, Schnenker. Schnenker? Oh, Schenker? now that he says it, it counts, yes, right? Yes, said this. I'm gonna, Zach said it first. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in on this because, yeah, Zach actually uh, had a theory about this last year, and it totally makes sense. Our understanding, having talked to numerous individuals within the industry with direct knowledge, is that the PPP loans kept multiple publishers afloat during COVID, and now the publishers haven't adjusted to the new economic reality and the market isn't where it needs to be, causing money flow issues that are compounded by recent distribution, shipping issues, and the increased cost of materials and business. I'll translate. They use PPP loans to keep saying they had money, but they kept doubling down on books no one was going to buy. Yes. And they kept flooding the market with books no one was going to buy. So then people weren't ordering more or they couldn't sell what they had and they were they were having to return it and they were losing money that way. And, you know, we're going to blame it on distribution issues, even though printing costs have gone up. Printing costs have so gone up. Shipping. There have been legitimate supply chain issues, but I think they've been uh, playing three-card Monty with the money. I think basically what's going on is they're deferring payments to freelancers because they're not getting paid by Diamond or their distributors or – you know, whatever's going on here, the freelancers are basically floating loans. Sm- without, without, without agreeing to it, really. Without I agreeing mean, they're, to it. They, they weren't, like, knowing they weren't going to get paid for months and months on end. And, look, there were problems before. We said in the previous video, I used to do work for IDW. Uh, before it became common knowledge that IDW was having financial problems, I would have to chase them for months to get paid. And, again, it wasn't – I don't think it was editorial's fault. I had no problem with the people I worked with. In fact, a lot of them were really, really good. That was pre-COVID. So it's that not was just the current – Years before the COVID. The new reality since COVID. No, there was problems before that. It just compounded the problems. And, again, if you have books that people don't want to effing buy and that they're selling like shit and then you're telling everybody your customers they're terrible people because they don't want these books you know people aren't going to buy your books this 
is absolutely infuriating. I just can't. This is absolutely infuriating. So many people went through so much. I literally almost for got saying through this. my chair a couple times. And I, I'm not joking. I'm like, I'm ready to get up and go throw hands and like and, flip the table. And, and they're going to pretend that YouTubers never mentioned this. It never yeah. came up before. It's oh my God. the other. And here's the thing, too. Like, even with the whole Comics Gate situation, a lot of the stuff that, again, take the politics out of it and just look at the numbers, right? A lot of the uh, ob observations by Comicsgate YouTubers were actually made by people that worked at Bleeding Cool years before Comicsgate. In fact, uh, Jude Terror, who decided he was going to make it his personal mission to take out Comicsgate, uh, made a lot of the exact same observations about the state of the direct market and how unsustainable it was. And he got all kinds of backlash, including from Heidi McDonald. I remember it. It was a huge deal. It was like, you know, comics is I burning. I remember we covered it. Yeah, it was like, comics is burning. I'm playing the fiddle or whatever. And uh, he got all kinds of crap for it. But because other people are saying the same things and they have politics that you don't like, then they have become the... So basically... But sometimes you don't even know people's politics. You're just assuming they know people's politics. You don't like... Captain Marvel for so legit you're obviously reasons. So an alt-right Nazi. You're obviously a Nazi. According to Twitter, there are more Nazis living in 2022 America than there were in Germany in 1942. Yeah, you know, I know. Um, so yeah, and now it affects Heidi McDonald because apparently she's not getting paid for advertising. Oh, so now, now, now she's gonna say, now you know, a spade's a spade, because they're all afraid of like not getting what, not getting a biscuit. But when you're not even getting your biscuit, your promise, then you you'll you'll bite the hand that was handing out the biscuits. But that actually that actually I shows like biscuit. <laughs> that actually shows like how cozy the comic book industry is that we're gonna cover for people and lie for people and lie that the uh, the send people fine. after people and, and try to get people, people canceled. After, uh, join whisper networks and try to uh -huh. get people canceled and and oh, now uh, you want to shout now I, whispering before but now when it affects you you're going to start screaming about it you cannot make all this the shit. middle digits for you uh shanker noted some of the companies being accused Shanker's of late right. shanker it's shanker but he's I, I don't know shanker him. I don't know them. Uh, some of the companies being accused of late payments to creators also owe money to comics news websites for advertising, including the beat, call it the trickle down economy, and less has been trickling down as of late. Heidi, I, I just, Heidi, we have websites, and yeah, our ad revenue is down, but we're fine, and we make substantially more money off of our website. We don't have to do Patreon for a thousand bucks we don't a have month to and be like, yay, we can keep our site up. And guess what? We just made $110,000 off of one single book. And we're going to make more books, and none of this affects us. We built a life raft a long time ago, and the warnings were there. But uh, news outlets like yours spent years uh, saying that the sky wasn't falling. Mm -hmm. The sky actually is falling. It's been falling, and now it's too late. Now that it's falling on you. Now it's falling on you. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't really feel bad for you. Karma is a bitch, and so am I. She can be. Yeah. I love her dearly, but... Totally. You can be salty Actually, sometimes. I'm usually pretty nice, but, you know... I'm worse than when you it, are. It, when it comes to this kind of stuff and, and, and the shit we've taken, I'm just like, oh, hell no. I'm literally like, bam! Aftershock Comics. Again, this is kind of a mid-tier, but I, again, I just want to reiterate. I am hearing from people. I can't, I can't validate it myself, but I'm hearing from people that even Marvel is slowing payments, which is worrisome. That's because usually you could always count on Marvel and DC, but if Marvel and DC... <laughs> like, sorry. But to pay regularly, even if the page rates weren't great, you know, because they were bankrolled by major corporations. But if, if Marvel's slowing their role, that that says a lot. Well, maybe means... if they hadn't backed shitty books. And, I mean, DC especially. I mean, yeah. maybe if they hadn't done some of these stupid books they've done and made changes they've made. Aftershock Comics, which has slowed, slowed the release of its titles, figured in many of the accusations and released a statement to the beat. The truth of the matter is that the company is addressing late payments as outstanding funds owed to the company come in. What? Owed to the company come in. The truth of the matter is the company is addressing the late as payments outstanding, outstanding owed, owed to the company come in. Basically, we're not going to pay you until we get paid. But that's not even written well. That's a statement they put out. Who well, they can't, they, can't, wrote that? they can't afford editors. Apparently. There are no non-payments. Everyone who is owed money will be wait, paid. Wait, 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 wait. They're going to get paid someday. So we don't appreciate the fact that you're calling it non-payment because we intend to pay them we, someday. We recognize our, come in. Yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> that's what happens with Chapter 11, too. Oh like, you get paid someday. I didn't, you, you, no one gets sued for not paying taxes. I intended to pay taxes. It just it was not non-payment. I just haven't done it yet. 
Well, that's that's what you do when the, when the IRS shows up at your door and they knock on your door and they say, "Hey, you haven't paid taxes in ten years." Like I was getting around to it. You don't pay your bills. You you had every. It's not non-payment. It's not non-payment. It's I had every intention of doing it someday. How the f- how the fuck is this a functional this is, industry? This is their actual statement. No <laughs> other industry in the fucking world operates like this. We recognize our obligations and consider creator compensation our number one priority. We apologize for this situation and are making our best efforts to rectify it as quickly as possible. Again, we're going to pay people. We just It's not non-payment uh, that we haven't paid ever because we intend to pay. Uh, I yeah. can't even. This That's is, their statement. I, I just, I, oh. I cannot believe that this is this is an actual industry. It, it's, I it's this is an actual statement. Freaking laughable. And and again, it's not just the smaller publishers. It's not just the Valiants, the Aftershocks. I guarantee you, IDW is probably doing the same thing. Uh, Dark Horse just got bought by Embracer Group because I think they saw the writing on the wall. Embracer Group's buying up a lot of things. They are, but I think they're like, "Hey, yeah, we gotta, we gotta get an exit strategy here." Now, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, manga publishers like Viz and stuff like that and Scholastic are fine. They're fine, but but when I'm hearing rumblings that Marvel Comics is late on payments, that's a that's a huge problem. It's just because you're a uh, comics gate adjacent alt-right Yahtzee <laughs> and you should have no voice in the comic industry and we need to get together behind the scenes in our quiet closed door whisper network to make sure you never work in comics again. Oh boy, I can't wait to work in comics again and not get paid. paid I know. Like it's, oh my God. They act like you want, like people want to work for nothing. You're never going to be allowed in our group uh, poverty stricken comic book artists again, Neon. Oh damn. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me go. Let me go. Just cry into my fat stacks of cash, because we're I actually. Wish we, I wish we had. Fat no, we all have fat stacks. Because all the money that we made from that's going to the next book. But at least we're solvent. At least we, you know, we're paying our. And in fact, some of our artists jumped in. We're working on projects now. They jumped in on Twitter. I said, hey, we always pay our artists within like a week or two of them turning in an invoice. And some of them jumped in and said, yes, this is 100 percent true. Because I'm like, we have the money up front to bankroll our books before. We even solicit them and, that's and hopefully crowdfund. how it continues. That's, hopefully, I'm not going to do it any other way because you don't know what's going to happen. No. If you don't have the money in the bank to pay the creatives to do the stuff, then you don't do the project. You don't do the project. I mean, it's as simple as that. You know, you don't have it, and and uh, you know, you don't put on the creators to do all this work and, that, and not get paid. I, I intend to pay you someday. Um, so yeah, Valiant hasn't even sent a uh, press release out or anything. They're down to a single title a month. Uh, Will Robinson's the one that started. We're hearing lots of other people, uh, lots of other people saying. Well, give him credit for speaking out because he knew he could get in trouble for doing it. He did it anyway. See, that's what we did back when you, a lot of you people shit on us and started calling us comics gate and all this this crap. We were just pointing out what we were seeing, and we didn't think sitting back and being quiet was the right thing to do. But when you speak out, everybody comes and blames it on you. But it takes a lot of guts to do that. We are making more money in comics and comics adjacent stuff than we did working in the quote-unquote comic book That's industry true. for That's years. That's actually true. You know? And more than we would have made with a deal, with an agent, a deal We're making more with we Scholastic made yeah. or something like that. It's not, it's not worth it. I mean, it, you get like the top 1%. You get the Raina Telgemeyers. You get the Dogman guy. But they are so rare. They are so rare that you can't bet now, on Now, I do want to say, it doesn't come without a lot of risk. It because comes with a lot of it, risk, yes. When you do this yourself... You know, there's a lot of risk involved because you know, you're not getting paid. You're not guaranteed money that you know you, whether they pay it now or sometime. It's a, there's a lot of risk, and like when you get an a, a advance, at least you have an agreement. You're getting some money. It's so when you do it yourself. Eventually. Yeah, when you do it yourself, <laughs> right? I meant like for Scholastic, right? yeah. but when you do it yourself, um, you're taking on all the risk. So I mean. You have to take that into consideration if we're being fair. Yeah, because, I mean, you you could actually front a creative team fifty, sixty, seventy five thousand dollars $75,000, whatever, to, to do a book and then have that book be a huge flop. And That's then true, and you're, you're out, out that money. money. Mm-hmm. You're out the money. You personally are out the money. But Which this might, is how— You know, might end up happening to us sometimes. It might. I mean, we might bet on the wrong horse, and but that's every company. But what they're doing— the way they're doing it now is they're letting the creatives who are just the hired help, they're letting take them take the, the risk. It's up to the company, it's up to the business owner to take the risk. And like, in fairness to these, these creators or these people that are doing the, the work, 
Um, if you've always been paid before, why would you think now you're not going to? I mean, you can't be like, well, if you should have known and not done it. Well, you can't say that too for everybody because because it might be a case where they worked with these people for years and years and never had an issue. So why would they expect one? Yeah, but this is why, you know, when you do work for hire, there needs to be some, some understanding of when you're going to get paid. Mm -hmm. I mean, and when you start to notice a pattern, and this is, again, this is part of the reason why I noped out of the, the comic book industry. When you start to notice a pattern that the payments come later, and later and later and later it's like then at that point you as a contractor have to say look you need to pay me 30 to 45 days at the latest i cannot float you any more work mm -hmm. uh, i mean it's no different than if you hire a plumber or an electrician or whatever they're not going to keep working for you indefinitely until you feel like catching up on your bills right you know but this is just really really interesting stuff admitting that the sales are down admitting that the stuff that's being put out there is not selling admitting that people aren't making money admitting that the ppp loans kept the comic book industry afloat for the last year or two unfreaking believable yep gonna wrap it up yep please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys we'll talk later bye